a week or so. And uh, was here last May uh, doing a uh, presentation of the sites, small and large, in the Quintana Roo area. And this time I'm just going to give you a brief of some of the illustrations I've done here. Some are just the original sketches and some are finished works. And add a couple of things here. I've been an illustrator since I was a child. And a really odd story is, is that uh, my father was in the Polish cavalry in the Second World War. And he used to love to draw horses. And he was quite good at it. And he went to fight in the Warsaw Uprising where he lost his right arm. And uh, since then, my whole family have been telling me that I got his right arm. <laughs> so, so that's a bit of a... Uh, I've always been interested in cultures. I've traveled all over the world. Um, I've been as far as Bolivia overland from LA. I left London after art college where I studied illustration and uh, literally went over land all the way to Australia, except where you had to get a boat or a plane. And I uh, spent a lot of time in India. And then in 1973 I moved to the United States and uh, got a job working at Hanna-Barbera. And I worked with them in the animation uh, studios in the valley and uh, went traveling, came back, and then I worked in the comics division as an inker for the, all the, the Hanna-Barbera comics. So that's a brief on me. Today I'm just going to show you a bunch of uh, drawings I've put together before I left my home in South Florida. And um, let's start by figuring this out. I don't have a... I, I've been influenced by a lot of people, um, and I always look at illustrators and I say, oh, that's great. I've never been a really good illustrator, but I've always enjoyed illustrating. And I think it's a passion you have to have. That's the basis of it. If you don't like it, don't do it. <laughs> so in this case, I've always loved to draw, and I'm always carrying a sketchbook with me wherever I go. Yesterday, I went into uh, some sites that I was completely amazed by. And um, we'll get into that just one. All right, let's get on with the show here. Uh, so that's my car. My company is Maya Vision. Couldn't be any simpler than that. And we really need some. <laughs> um, a road, as some of you may know, or if you don't know, to get into the ruins, the ones that I really enjoy, you start off on the beginning of the road. It's a lot of driving in the uh, Yucatan area, and I really want to just cover the Yucatan, uh, sta the state, not the whole peninsula. Uh, and if I ever get invited back again, I would like to do another one on the Campeche area and uh, down in the Rio Beck area as well. But that's for another time, probably when they come in and do my other nonsense in my mouth. All right, so let's move on here. So most of you know that this is, this is the area we're talking about. And a couple of, draw, a couple of the illustrations I've got are just set just outside of the Yucatan area. Um, so let's go. So this is usually what you're confronted with. A long end. This, go, this actually is from, taken from the hill above Santa Elena, um, I believe. Um, it's actually going to Santa Elena. It's actually Santa Elena's on the very far end. And if it was any clearer, you could actually, let's go back there, you could actually see the church. The iglesia is right there. And... Uh, so this is one of the many roads I've traveled. Years ago, when I came to uh, Miami, I joined the Institute of Maya Studies, and the late, great Dr. Ruth Gubler, who lived here for many years, 
sadly passed away a little while ago. It was my dear friend, and uh, she actually commissioned me to do the poster that year in uh, 1995 for a conference we had where I got the opportunity to meet many archaeologists that were very helpful uh, in pointing me in the right direction. That, of course, that eventually became, I've got the wrong buttons always here, haven't I? This became my Christmas card one year. So it's all illustrated stuff, but it's really part of the job. Um, most of you know this, I assume. Anybody doesn't know this? One of my very first drawings at Zibul Chaltun, uh, up in the north, north, north of the city here. Uh, one of the first places I'd actually visited. Um, so that's my illustration from a sketch. So I'd do a pencil sketch, and then I would uh, take it home and try and ink it in. I usually use a pen and ink, and then I would color it in. In those days, I used to carry um, a little watercolor, a little, pat, little uh, watercolor, what do you call them now? Anyway, they were all just... Yes? You don't take a picture. Uh, if, if it's something of detail, yes, I will take a picture because uh, you, you can't remember it all in a sketch. And sometimes it's usually, in my case, it's usually very hot um, to stand out there uh, and, and scribble away. So I, tell you, I, I do do a sketch and then I take these watercolors, a little watercolor set. Um, but I prefer to use the inks, but I'm certainly not going to travel around with little bottles of ink. So a lot of these are either ink or they are watercolour. Um, and first of all, I, I put the, uh, the, the line of the, all the lines are inked uh, with a pen. Moving on here. This is a small structure just inside Zibul Chautun. And... <clears throat> Not very significant, but I've always gotten to like the little, the smaller things, not the, not the, I, we've all been to all the big sites here. Um, I don't go to any of them anymore, unfortunately. But I do like to find these odd little structures. What was uh, the purpose of that one? There was no purpose, it's just a little residential building. Yes? Yeah. So like, just no, like grand ceremonial So there was something was other than this? Yeah, there was like multiple disconnected bedrooms kind of like around that main other building that we just presented earlier. Oh, okay. So just, folks would just sleep in there. Residential. Yeah. Nothing significant, nothing religious in, you know, in this particular. Again, you can see the style already. It's pen and ink. And... Uh, and to go back to the photography, whoever asked about the photography, is that you have to take pictures because otherwise you're going to be drawing something and it's completely different. You've got to relate back to that photograph. But a lot of the times I didn't. If it was something I could... I used to have a good memory so I could figure it out. But <laughs> as time goes by, I tend to uh, uh, take a few pictures like... I'm going to try and make this a little bit funny because I was working in the humor business at Hanna-Barbera. So I'm going to interject a few cartoony things for you. Uh, and this, of course, is the Iglesia at Zibel Chartum. And uh, it's all, all the people that are complaining about the topes. <laughs> because they were, they, if I remember, they were pretty steep going into the actual site. I didn't hear very much about this chap, Frederick Catherwood, English, um, until I really started to get into the Maya. And uh, this was Frederick Catherwood's drawing of the arch at Labna. And uh, that's in the Puk area of, uh, of this state. And just to give you an idea that 
he would use not photography or anything, but he would use a camera lucida. So everything he did, he would translate through optics. And that's how all of his work was done. That seemed to have been an endless task. Um, but this is the sort of thing that came, and it looks very natural, looks very real. I think it's really quite beautiful. Um, but he wasn't one to scribble. He would always really work it. And of course, he, he had a tragic ending. I mean, all the, all of the, much of his work was lost at sea. Uh, but what we do have is precious. And uh, I think it's just terrific. You can still buy some prints these days, uh, original prints. And this is the camera Lucida. Of course, he would have one that would cover his whole area. So he'd have to have donkeys pulling the stuff along. And uh, anyway, it gives you an idea that it's projected. It's actually projected. So um, that's the way he would look at it. He wouldn't scribble it. And then I mean, there was no photography in those days anyway. And this is my version. And that's all drawn as I saw it. And that's what remains of it. I tried to figure out at that, at that time, where would he have taken, that's why I've added the little photograph at the bottom, because I wondered where exactly would he have been standing when it was all happening. Uh, so it's quite, a, it was quite, quite an amazing experience to arrive at some of these sites. And a lot of the drawings that I've done are, are done in the, the first time I ever go there. I wouldn't go back and repeat something unless there was a structure that I really, really enjoyed. Um, but that's just the pencil drawing up above that I, that I did of that some time ago. And that's the finished coloured version of uh, the arch at Labana. Uh, this we've done, it says right down there, 2002. So it's a bit of a time ago. And right next door to that is the arch at the, uh, sorry, the Mirador at Labna. Uh, from my pencil drawing, I would ink it. So that is just an inked drawing on the left. Um, and then I decided to color it by that stage. I said, you know, carrying all these watercolors and things is getting a little bit silly. So I decided that I would just carry around a whole bunch of crayons and colored pencils. And Prismacolor makes this fabulous colored pencil series. And that's, uh, and I love the result of it because it, it, it's got that sort of fuzzy feel to it. And um, so that's an illustration, black and white and the colored inversion. And of course, this is the palace down the road, in fact, along the uh, on the road right there, there's a, you go to this place called the Pass, and that's what you would be looking at. And this little area here was the important part, because this is actually closed off. But, you know, some of us don't follow the rules. <laughs> and so when you walk through there, you're actually coming out into here. And all this is, there's nothing up above it. And the, the arch is further down that, that road over there. And I've taken this pho photograph off, off, off the computer because I, I didn't find anything anywhere close to give you an idea of what it's like inside there. And this particular area here blew me away. I said, wow, I've got to, I've got to do that drawing. And I did, I did. And so we move on. And this was my sketch. But it's really dark in there. No, not really dark. It's just it's it's you know it's a, it's just there because it's all it's all I keep forgetting a little point. It's just flat above it, and it's just this little area here. It actually stops right here, so it's a little opening, and who knows which direction it went any which way. But this it, it must have been very important because this this particular mask. It had to have some significance. You wouldn't put it in a corridor somewhere. So uh, to me, uh, I said, that, that's just brilliant. So I actually stood about here 
and looked out that way, and uh, they never arrested me for anything. Um, okay, let's get this right. So that's the pencil drawing I did at the actual site. Um, I thought it was great because it was really in good condition. And as you know, a lot of the noses, the track noses have been broken off, um, and you don't really see them. Uh, these, these, these parts here are usually broken off check masks and uh, so moving right along and this was my colored version and my photograph so I decided I would just color it in with pencils and leave it and I saw I really enjoyed this um, so it gives you an idea of some of the work that I've been doing here as you can see I might, the, 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 nobody was allowed in the but, it, it, you know, it leads you to a lot of questioning about, you know, how they constructed this stuff, number one. You know, I, I don't get too much, I mean, as, as many archaeologists as I've met and appreciated their advice, I still, the one thing was, how did they put all this together? Well, yesterday I had an opportunity to talk to a, a friend who took me around some sites. And we both were, were befuddled by the fact that, you know, somebody had to, that there had to be a plan. There had to be somebody who said, okay, it's like, um, I'll give you an example. My dentist, for instance, my dentist would say, all right, if you come on this day, I'll bring in that guy. And then you come in two days later and he'll fix this. You know, so that, that sort of thing. So I imagine somebody was in charge saying, this would be the space we're going to build this massive thing. And they would have to bring in somebody who would have to draw this out somehow. Uh, and then somebody would have to come in, a contractor today, and they would have to put this thing together. Okay, fine, so look, this is what we'll do here, this is what we'll do there. Um, but then you, you look at this, the, 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 the quality of, uh, of this. I mean, it, it, I'm still befuddled by the fact that it couldn't be, uh, they had obsidian blades. Oh yeah, okay, cool. But how would you, how would you do this? Some of these pieces are massive. And yesterday we came across a small site uh, just over in the Campeche border where there was a platform. And if I were to tell you, the blocks on the outside of the platform that were still there were massive. I mean, they were just massive. I mean, it would take 50 people to lift that rock. So. Yes, madam. How, how do you explain the diversity that you see in all of the Mayan um, ruins? I mean, it just boggles my mind right. to think of designing all of these different structures. Well, they have computer programs. <laughs> <laughs> I, again, that's a very good question, madam. Um, as I say, they had these guys that planned. They probably brought in somebody from Campeche. Bring him in. I want him to do, the, uh, do that part of this. And they would have to lay it out because if you look at some of these sites where if you drive down the road from the Ushmal area and you go all the way into Campeche, there are tons of sites. But you know that. Because you can see that they are mounds. You can see that there are platforms. And all you need to do is like climb up onto the highest thing and look around as we did. And we could say, this goes on forever. And what to you as you drive along will say, oh, it's just a mound. Forget about it. Uh, the, the reality is that they were actually, I believe they were cities. I really believe that they were big cities. And that hundreds of thousands of people lived there. And, uh, and that's, my, my, that's the only simple conclusion I can come to regarding uh, some of the areas where there are no structures like uh, Chichen Itza or Shmau, which have been uh, reconstructed extensively. So all you've got is mounds. And, uh, and so, Akanke. Anyone been to Akanke? Lovely little place, got a wonderful temple with masks all around it. This happened to be one of the masks drawn on site. And uh, 
coloured in because I believed it would be, I could actually know that it was really red. They painted it red. I'm not going to get into the painting part today, but how they got all their colours is just beyond me. Um, so this is a mask at Akan Cave. There's an English lady, her name was Adele Breton, A-D-E-L-E-B-R-E-T-O-N. And Adele, uh, same period, same time as uh, Frederick Catterwood, uh, came down and she was just just a lonely little person, but just doing her own thing. Photograph of her on a donkey. And the, the archaeologists and the, 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 the other people, for some reason, didn't much care, didn't care for her very much at all. But anyway, so um, that's one of the masks that I can case. She spent time there and she did some lovely drawings. If you ever find a book, or actually you can go online today, because they have computers today, and you can actually punch her name in and you can see some really nice, just watercolours, but delicious, absolutely delicious. Shkambo, anyone been to Shkambo? Yeah. I know you have, sir. <laughs> Shkambo is where all the salt works are in the north. And uh, this is the main plaza. There's also an iglesia that's right at Shkambo. And that was constructed out of Maya stone. Um, but this is the original square at Shkamba. It's surrounded by, you know, just flat lands and salt water areas. And it was a big trading center in the very north to, as you go north, it would be to the right of Progresso. Uh, and a, a good day trip, if some of you live here and want a good day trip, it's well worth going to the site. I thoroughly enjoyed going there, just by chance like we found it. What do you think the building was above the stairs? Probably, if it wasn't just, there was a, obviously it seemed like there was a building right here, a structure, no doubt. Don't get, platforms were big, Platform, a lot of platforms everywhere. For what? Ceremonies. Dances? Probably. You know, rock and roll, who knows what they were up to. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so this is Scambo, and this was my drawing. That is, uh, again, 2005. Ekbalan, anyone been there? Some of you must have been there, you sure will know that place wonderful site. I haven't been there for years. But uh, while I was there, this whole area was actually covered with, uh, with all kinds of stuff. Uh, you know, they had these poles just to keep the rain off it. And uh, anyway, that's my pencil drawing. No photography, just spent hours there. And I took away the actual cover of the whole thing so that you could see it as perhaps what it looked like. That's a wonderful, beautiful building. And it's up on a platform. You have to go up the central staircase to, to get up there. <laughs> Another site well worth visiting. And a pencil sketch, of course. Finished drawing, and this is at Schlapack. One of the only palaces reconstructed there. And I think that Catherwood was also, he did a lot of the drawings in the Puk area. So, Again, I'm using, uh, you know, pen and inks. And this is the palace at Sail, another interesting site. And, uh, I, I mean, you could get into the whole history of, you know, the platforms being built at different... I have a nice illustration of, of some of the images here. There's a diving god situated in there, and there's a... But I, I think they were built on different stages. Some of this stuff has been built in stages. It's not just one building and somebody said, oh, that, that, that's it, fine. They, if somebody, as, as an example, the king dies and somebody else moves in, right? He's going to say, oh, I don't like that. I think I'll change that a little bit. And so I think that throughout, and this may be a good example of what remains uh, in this reconstruction, uh, that it came in different phases. Um, yesterday I went to a site where you could actually see the original structure and 
probably the king of that space died and somebody moved in and said, I don't like that, I want to do something else. And they literally, they, they literally, they, if you see the, the, these colonnades here, they covered one of these areas in uh, cement or whatever they were using then, and just built an angle, they built an angled, brand new construction, completely different style. So you know that it wasn't just built one time. Adding was a big thing, I believe. So that's the palace at Sahil. There's the diving god. I did have it. So that gives you an idea. Detail. Again, this one's coloured pencil. So you know I came back again because I was so enthralled by it. And uh, a different style. This is the mirror door. Uh, not much left of it, but I thought it was a nice thing to draw and finished in colour. That also was done a few years ago. Uh, it's an adventure going around these places because you, uh, you find all sorts of things. Steve, are those trees actually growing out of the building? There? Any, the last picture too. Oh, the last picture. Yes, absolutely. I think it was just stuff growing out of it. Yeah. I mean, when they cleaned it up and reconstructed it, portions of it, um, it was probably clean. But they don't. Ina, the, 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 the gobierno, the Ina people, uh, the archaeological folks here, they don't. Nowadays, they don't do a lot of. I think the word is maintenance. Uh, that they've been really, really busy with the construction of this train. So all hands on deck on that front. So I know firsthand that why aren't they doing it? And you know, I, I, I was not so long ago at a site in Quintana Roo where I, I saw an archway in the San Shankan Reserve. And the archway had a whole section at the bottom that didn't have anything holding it up. And I happened to go with a guy named uh, Miguel Covarrubias Reina. You know, his uncle was the original Miguel Covarrubias. Miguel and I are very, very good friends. And I said, Miguel, this is terrible. This is going to, in a year, this will really come down and that will be the end of it. So I said, you better get on the blower and call those people up and tell them to come and fix it. And uh, three months later, he sent me a photograph saying we did a good job. And they really they packed it in, so now it'll stand for another few years. However, along that stretch in Quintana Roo, going to the other state for a moment, there are a lot of small structures, late classic, late post-classic, tiny little things, you know, no major significance, paint, yes, uh, what were they used for? They were used for a small ceremony, uh, customs, <laughs> because they're all along the coastline there. Uh, so I found out now that the two of the structures that, that I had drawn, excuse me, that I had drawn, they're not there anymore. It's just the same rubble you go and see on the road, you know, around the corner. I was really, really disappointed. And the reason is they don't have the staff. They don't, I don't know if they pay them enough money, but they don't have any maintenance crew to come and look after any of these sites, which to me is very, very sad. Um, but anyway, there's a lot, lot more I, we can discuss about what they could and couldn't do, but let's move on here because this is all we're dealing with today. So this is Oshkintok. You all should know that one. It's down the road a little bit, not very far away. Um, another interesting site, um, I visited a couple of times. Uh, this is the Palace of the Devil, and this is my drawing of it. Some of these things I haven't published, some of these things you can see on my Maya Vision website page. Uh, but uh, several of these illustrations, you're the first people to see them. So this is my illustration. I hope you like the clouds. I've really gotten into the clouds. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. Again, Oshkintok. 
and that's the Maya name for it, Satun Sat, or in English, the labyrinth. And it goes in, it goes in through various channels. There are many constructions. Yashtilan has all the, the same sort of stuff going on in the entrance uh, to that site. And uh, anyway, I did an illustration of that too. But for some reason, if you look at the photograph, you can see it looks very, very wide. So I'm wondering if my camera was a little bit off. Or maybe it's the lens. You know, we're talking about the lens again. Uh, not till we get Frederick. Because I think Frederick, when he did those things, I think he was slightly off. And I think I'll show you that in a moment. But anyway, this was mine. Uh, of course, it could be just me. Uh, so that's that structure at uh, Oshkin Chok once again. And this is on the outside of Oshkin Tok. This is another little small structure. And I was there in the late afternoon and the sun, I mean, the, the light was just brilliant. And I think I did take a photograph because I couldn't put it all together at the time. And uh, so this is a structure which today does not exist. So if you do find it, it's probably just a pile of rubble. What year did you take that? Did you do that? This were, oh gosh, 90s, 90s. I spent two months in this area in 1995 after we had the uh, Institute of Maya conference. And then I took two months off my work and spent two months traveling around the Sahel area. My first introduction to what I really love, you know, as well as I love my dentist, I love to go out into the field and check all that stuff out. So that's, I don't think there was even a number that I, I couldn't find a number for the structure. So as I said, I'm going to throw in a little bit of fun. So somebody commissioned me and said, what would a Maya princess look like? <laughs> and I said, my gosh, what would she look like? And I didn't want to get any reference from anything like the, those Aztec drawings or anybody's idea. So I just said, let me just figure this out. So this is my idea. It was published in a, an English publication. Anyway. Check Balai. Uh, I visited this when you couldn't even find it. It was completely covered over. And uh, this is another photograph I found online. I would give it credit if I could give it credit. But uh, this is the only part that really remains. And it's got, a, it's got an archway here. And that's another discussion because you see a lot of those at Kabar, uh, the archways. And you would imagine that there would be steps going up probably to a platform uh, for one reason and another. Um, but anyway, this was, uh, I, I, you couldn't find this. I had to go through the bush with, with this young kid who said, oh, we can get, get in there. Now I believe there's a road that goes into it. As with many of the sites that I used to draw, I, I believe that they've cleared it up and made it more of a, accessible to people to go and visit. And they should, they should do more of that, I think, because I think people want to see this. The locals want to be part of it. They would employ people to make it a little bit more, to, they don't want to see, use the word touristy, but just to make it, make it more accessible. So that the, the only things like Ushman and Chichen Itza are not the only Maya sites to visit. Yes, miss? Don't you think we ought to create an international um, team that comes in and keeps these ruins accessible and and up to par, that we could create an international uh, team to do this. I mean, uh, we need to do this. This is too important. It's a good question. I don't have an answer for it. I don't. I don't. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I know. I mean, and that's why we need an like international... And the Eastern Seaboard of the U.S. from no, Guatemala we need, to... We need the, 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 the structure of the world. To well, it's a good idea, there. madam. It's a really good idea. But I don't know if that is the real answer. There are so many... But there's a lot of important 
certain people that know about these, uh, these ruins. And we need to get together and create this team. I think it should come from, if anything like that were to happen, it should be from the people here doing it, not yes. an international. Yes. I don't so believe. You go, you've got your next hobby. You create it and see who follows okay. it. Okay, I will. <laughs> You're on. There you go. Yes, miss. Again, si I mean, si but simply saying that, that this is an enormous task. Oh, yeah. It's a way too enormous for... Uh, I'm, I'm wondering about that a little bit. I mean, they've got far more important things to be spending the money on. I'm not saying they're spending it in the right way, but I'm saying that, as I said yesterday, I drove around in the middle of nowhere and I looked around and me and the chap who was with me said, look, you can see that there, you can see, see that over there. And the whole, it was a city. And then you would get back onto the main road and you would go half a mile down the road and it would be another, it would be like a suburb of this guy. And it's all rubble. It's all rubble. And it's sad, but that's just the time, time will tell, time has put this all to, to rest. You're not going to resurrect half of these things, I don't believe. Anyway, Chakmalai is uh, near Shul, if anyone knows where that is, in the middle somewhere. And uh, it's on the way to Q Week. And there's my pencil sketch. I never saw the photograph, but I added it to this presentation. So I'm really fascinated by just looking at these things. I mean, just, it's just extraordinary. Again, I wonder, how did they put all this stuff together? This is the big question. And how did they, come on, how did they do it? Mind-boggling. It really is mind-boggling. Oh, Steve, don't you know it was the aliens? <laughs> I'll leave that to everybody and their own thoughts, what, what, what you may think it really is. Anyway, so that's Chak Malai, and there's my coloured version. Beautiful little structure. And you always wonder when you just see these pieces. Oh, when you see when you see some of these small pieces, you always have to wonder how large was this original structure? Mm -hmm. And it must have been massive. How many levels were there? Mm -hmm. uh, and all that remains is a small corner like like the, in this case at Chak Bai. And then beyond that it's all just rubble. Uh, having some fun. <laughs> this was actually for a, um, a company that made a video about the Maya, um, but not a serious video about uh, anything educational, but just for school presentation, I believe. So I did my own version. I said, what do you think of this? And I could imagine, just like a football match in England, you know, same old stuff, you know, Man doesn't change. History repeats itself all the time. So that's my idea of what a ball game may have looked <laughs> And that's uh, my idea of how the motion of the ball player would be. And uh, the same, same people, same project. Sorry, am I on your way? I don't apologize. So they, they would use upper part, hips, no football there, that's for sure. So that gives you a kind of motion of what I thought the ball player might be in a position to be playing the, ball, the rubber ball. And of course after the ball game there's, <laughs> there's always the pub. And if there's no pub you will get together at someone's house and complain about why they kicked the ball the wrong way. What did they drink? Uh, Balche, they drank all sorts of things. Yeah, they drank. Cactus. 
Probably, they yeah. They, they, they came up with some interesting things in order to build some of these buildings. You know, and I do mean hallucinogenic things. So, but Bauche, uh, you know, the, anything. C corn was the main thing. So anything we could use the corn for, they would... Well, what about peyote and, and... It's further north. That's further north. That's more in the United oh, States. Oh, not here? But, uh, you know, uh, it's a good question. Again, you know, uh, she may be making something right there. So, so, and the kids are playing their marbles. And here is a good example of what I... Excuse me, I'm really a bit of a pain here. Um, is that you? Yeah. And the same shirt. Um, Catherwood, again, I think I brought this up earlier. Catherwood would use camera lucida. So if you look at his structure on the left, it looks fairly wide, like I was explaining the previous Frederick Catherwood drawing. It seemed to be elongated more than the normal eye could see. Uh, and so I went there one day, it was late afternoon, and you can see that there's a, a difference just in the differences in the, in the width here versus the width here. Where is that, Steve? This is uh, Chungkat Sim, it's Abakche. When you pass the main Puk area, uh, Sail and Labna, you have to keep going for quite, quite a while. And you probably won't find it because there is no road going there. But it's, it's, it's on the left. There are hundreds, let me just briefly explain, there are hundreds of structures in that area, of which I know of a few. I'm not going to tell you where they are. Ina wouldn't want me to tell you where they are. And that's the reality. So this one you could probably find if you found a local who would take you there. And, uh, and well worth seeing. But interesting that Catherwood would also do that. But I'm saying in terms of the, the, the distance between there and there is completely different from there to there. And it's the same facade. So. And there's my drawing. It's 145, it's late afternoon for me. So it's a scribble. I love to scribble. I like to just go there and do, the, do, do what I call scribbling. So that's the same place. Kewick. You should all know that. Anyone been to Kewick? A few of you? You're the only person that's ever been anywhere. It's terrible. <laughs> yeah. Uh, interesting site. I, I enjoyed going there, except it was all closed, and again I had to climb over the gate and walk the couple of kilometres, what is it, two, three kilometres in from the road. Nobody there. It was the first time I ever got lost. I actually, and of course you didn't have a camera or a, a GPS or anything in those days, so I was a little bit freaked out by it. So this is a photograph, another photograph, as you can see, I thefted it offline, and there's a credit to the photographer. And that's my drawing. That's from uh, 2003. <coughs> there are other structures there, but this, this was the most interesting structure at the site. Again, an enjoyable place to visit. You can get in there nowadays. It, it, it is open. Um, I don't know if you have to make an appointment to go there. I'm not sure. Does anyone know? Do you? Yeah, you have only by appointment. Thomas only by appointment. Galaretta. Thomas Galaretta. So you'd have to get in touch with Ina. And their offices are in North Merida. Uh, yeah. um, there was a chap called Alfredo Barrera Rubio who came to the 1995 conference uh, at the Institute of Maya Studies. Very dear friend. I remember the good old days where you could go up to the Ina offices and they would give you passes. Here you go, here's a pass for here, here's a pass for that one. And, I could, and that's how I got into all these places. Um, nowadays, it's, you really can't get a pass. If you're not Mexican, <laughs> you've got to pay. 
and that's the story behind that one. Especially the bigger sites now, I, I, I think the um, Ushman is now fairly expensive. What is it, around $30 or so to get in? Somebody would... Yeah, and if you want to go to the Sandal Night Show, it's an extra 700 pesos a night. Are you kidding? Yeah. Whoa! And no reduction, no reduction for children. Not to mention your four dollar parking spot. Yeah. <laughs> All right, moving. So that's Curic. Thank you, Stefan, for telling that you can't get in there. You've got to get permission. I think that's going to be the same with a lot of the Chakbalai Might well be the same with that, even though there is a road there. More fun, having a little bit more fun. Yes, Stefan? Not about Chuck Belay because you mentioned it's on, it's on private grounds. So it's, it's also by appointment. And who would you contact in this case? You in this case, this is a, it's called Las Aguilas. It's a community, uh, mostly Italian community, close to Kiwi. And they, they are walled, and, but they have a restaurant too. So try your luck at the main the main uh, gate, you know, and ask if you can see the room. And that would be a track. It's not open. It's, no, it is. Oh, so it's closed still. Yeah. Yeah. Did you just have a custodian that lived in America that you could get in touch with to go to Kiwik? Kiwik? Well, Kiwik can do with Thomas, no? Thomas, yeah. They are at right, the yeah. yeah, interesting. It's very interesting. So again, some of these sites you can get into if you're really keen. Um, I used to just crawl under the fence. Well, what are you going to do? So anyway, this is just a, another silly drawing. Thought I'd throw it in there just to... And there's more. More road, that is, because you're always on the road. And this again, you can see in the background, those are the Pook Hills. And this is heading from Tekash, I believe. Going back into the Pook region. And you should all know this by now. There's a photograph I got offline. Fortunately, I don't, no credits to the photographer in this case. Really enjoyed being there. This was some time ago. And this is Catherwood's drawing. Of the same art. In 1844. And my drawing. Come on, you've got to give a bit, bit of a laugh, eh? <laughs> Sorry. A sense of humour doesn't hurt. <laughs> so, anyway. What did they have for bathrooms? <laughs> did, did they have a bathroom? No. Or did they just go out in the forest? Oh, I wouldn't get into detail, but um, most probably. I... I, I Fairly steep, I mean, fairly no steep structure. Room, another area, like in England, or you know, where they had kind of a ledge, and you peed on the ledge, over the ledge. Oh, <coughs> it's a good question. I really wouldn't want to get into that. Um, <laughs> Why not? Tricky ground there. Tricky ground. I doesn't have a bathroom. You can't sell it. That's all I know. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Maybe there's a secret chamber in there. You never know. <laughs> Another sketch. I believe that looks like 2007. 2001, rather. <laughs> this is the side of the stairwell. This is the side of the stairwell of the temple of the, uh, the El Adivina, rather, El Adivina, at Ushma. And the whole, the whole side of the stairway has got masks on both sides. You have to really start thinking, who, how could they have constructed all this out of rock? Still boggles me. Another check mask, another period. And the magician just did it overnight, right? 
Sorry? The magician did it overnight. The magician did it overnight. Well, I'm more inclined to the lady in the middle over there who suggested that these guys came down in the middle of the night indeed and said, all right, we'll take over here. We'll see you, we'll see you tomorrow night. And that's also Adolf Schmidt. And that's the dovecote. The photograph is on the left coming through and the drawing from 1995 is on the right from the other side. Also finished. Um, some of my originals are in a, a pretty messy condition and uh, need to be cleaned up. But computers do that nowadays. These are just taken from the original drawings with a copyright symbol on uh, for people not to publish. A lot of my work has been thefted, I would say. Yeah, sure. I mean, I've seen magazines where they've used all sorts of my illustrations, never giving you credit, of course. I think Valerie, you'll like that one. <laughs> because it's got that sort of northern English accent to it, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, dialogue, uh, the rain god, the actual uh, construction of the, the mask itself, he's actually wearing something called goggles. And they look just like that. There's one on the entrance into Tikal, if you ever go to Guatemala, there's, there's a big Tlaloc mask. Steve, do you think there's um, some relationship between the Egyptian pyramids and these pyramidal structures, that there's some kind of a exchange with, it? I mean, did um, No, but there are a lot of similarities. Uh, you know, you, you can put several, you could take several cultures and you can put them together, like in Campuchia, for instance. You could see a temple, they're all pretty much the same. They've got what? the vertical... Why? Oh. They're mountains. There you go, mountains. Mountains. Or indeed. just the, the ability to put rocks or, or boulders or something at the base and then less and less and less. Well, um, architecturally. Well, I think there's some kind of mathematics involved there. Okay. Uh, you know, I, I, I think we see walls today like this, but to construct things in them days, they had to look at it in terms of weight uh, and construction and all kinds of other uh, architectural uh, things. Um, this was done in 2019, and this is near a town called Kumpich, which is actually across from the border, uh, of the Yucatan border. And uh, I happened to arrive in this town, and strangely enough, I met a guy who said, oh, you got a, because I said I was looking for something exciting to draw, and he said, well, I've got a perfect place. My wife was with me, but she couldn't make it all the way up. You had to go through these rocky, rocky area. You, you know perfectly well that there were structures everywhere. But there was one structure, and this is it. There's the photograph on the top, uh, my drawing of it. And uh, it was actually in pretty good shape, all standing alone on top of a hill. And if you looked over the other side there, behind the trees that are there, you actually look down in the distance at the town of Kumpich. You probably imagine that was also part of a Maya city or small town. And a coloured version. You could say I like to use my uh, coloured pencils in that one. In 1995 again. You should all know that. Apparently, I've, I've just found out that they're really doing a lot of work at Kaaba. If anybody knows that. Is that right, Sefa? Yeah. Yeah. Um, they're really doing some good stuff there. They're, the side where the arch is here is now being uh, finding all kinds of things that they're reconstructing um, on that side. And this is the place where you've got the masks, the temple with all the masks on it, uh, on the other side of the road. They're building a museum there as well. 
the building a museum. They will. Yeah, All right. Keep me updated on that one. That'd be interesting. Love the site. I love Kaaba. It really has a good vibe about it. That's again another structure on the side of the palace. This is actually the backside of the palace of the masks there. This is the Temple of, shall I say, Temple of the Masks. And right over there in that area there, you come to this. This is another, this was done many years ago. Watercolour, watercolour. Pen and ink, my favourite. Another odd structure somewhere in the, in the back there. Come on, just a sketch. As I say, some of I pulled out whatever drawings I can find. So the hundred, I've got hundreds of drawings of places, but this one, the, some of the places you've never even heard of, and neither have I. And I couldn't even tell you what their names are. And I think I mentioned a little earlier that the arches always fascinated me. The arches, and these three are at Kaaba. And there are others all over the place. The one you saw at Chak Molai. Um, anyone got any ideas on that? On why those arches? I would say that there would be a stairway. They also call it flying staircase. Yeah, flying so buttress. Flying buttress. They work so they pierce them with half walls or walls, so you can have yeah. through and you can use the entrances to them original entrance system. Right, in some cases there are none immediately underneath. Doors, <laughs> like on the one on the left over there, that would be, there would be a doorway there. But yes, but then I want to, oh, do you mind if I sit down for a moment? Oh, God. <clears throat> um, I would also think that there, were, there was, it would be a stairway onto a platform on the, on the top. Platform or second floor? And then you could go up there, and that would be a, a living quarters, even. Yeah. So, anyway, so uh, these are three drawings that I did, and uh, and I'm still gonna wonder and wonder how they constructed all this stuff. And this is my pan. Again, I found the photograph above online because it was the best way I could describe the positions of where I was drawing. So this particular structure there would have been drawn from there looking that way. And this drawing here, what remains of that structure, I would be sitting here looking this way. So that's why I included that photograph. Anyway, it's all about the love of drawing and the love of painting and the love of illustrating. And that's what some of us do. This also. In this case, this is a very good case of background. It actually was a little dirty and mucky. So I did put it into a computer, I confess, because I wanted to clean it up. And then I thought, you know, just having a white background would look really awful. So I just added a background color. But that would really be the extent of my usage of a computer, is how can I embellish this slightly and not just have a, a sketchbook background. <laughs> but uh, beyond that, everything is all hand drawn. All my drawings are done by hand. And this is uh, some caves. Observatory. Now this is 2002. I don't know what they've done, if they've done anything else there. If they've done any more. I think they've pretty much finished everything there. and It's just a site. 
that's also at Chichen. And um, th this, this side here, this is a wall. I just wanted to say to myself, I'd better show that it's actually a temple structure behind it. So you can see that. And the ball court is in front here. So as you look down the ball court, you'll see the wall, and then you'll see a little bit of that temple right there. This is just another pencil sketch. <laughs> and this is sketch book. Now this is where we go into another phase of uh, another state. And on that note, I'm going to say thank you very much for coming. And I hope you enjoyed the show. And it is just about an hour.